Hey tennis fans, back at you a little closer to these black courts. Here are today's highlights you won't want to miss. In the first semifinal, it was Kyle Edmund against the sixth seed Miyamur Kecmanovic. Kecmanovic hit a bevy of unforced errors in the match to go down 0-5 in the first set. He'd go on to drop the first 6-1. In the second, Edmund continued his dominance. He won 79% of his first serve points in the match and didn't get broken in any of his nine service games. He'd go on to win 12 of the last 13 points in the second set to take the W 6-1, 6-4. Andreas Seppi and Jason Jung featured play in the nightcap. Precise and steady were the two words I would use to describe the Italian as he grabbed the first set 6-3. Unless he was hitting forehands, serves, or volleys, you would see him hitting forehands all the way in the doubles alleys of the ad side, looking to dictate play, then come to the net to take away time from the speedy Jung. Seppi took the second set 6-2 and advances to the finals against Kyle Edmonds. The most iconic feature at the New York Open is the black courts. And tournament director Peter Lebvedev tells us the story behind them. The origin of our black court is we talk to players and we sort of listen to some people and say what are some different things that can make us special and um, they all said they love the idea of the black court and they see the ball better, it shows up better on TV um, and it also helps us on our surface here and being able to put it over the ice and on the uh, Coliseum floor so we took a chance with it and everybody so far has really, really liked the idea of it. They cover the ice with their ice boards and then we have to build another deck around that so that it's all level and then we put some plastic down and then put the court on top of it. You don't get to play on the black court anywhere else in the world. Uh, I was there last year as well and I really enjoyed playing on the black court. Uh, I think it's easier on the ice as well. It's amazing obviously, they bring so much energy. Uh, the crowd's getting better and better each, each day and you know, hopefully tomorrow is going to be awesome as well. Gives it that, that different look. I mean, we're the only one on the ATP tour with the home of the black court. Peanut butter and jelly, hot dogs and baseball, drinking and tennis. The US Open has its signature cocktail, the Honey Deuce. Today we're with Kelly teaching us the signature cocktail of the New York Open. Kelly, what you got for us? Well, uh, we here at Six Smith, uh, the first gin to be made in London almost 200 years, have thought that the only thing not better than watching tennis in life is tennis with a gin and tonic in your hand. Sounds There's good to me. better way to enjoy it with an understanding the perfect essentials of how to make the perfect serve gin and tonic. So we're going to do it here for you today. So the first thing you need to do is have a quintessential London dry gin where juniper and citrus are in the forefront, which is what we have here at Sip Smith. The next important thing is your ice. You want to have a full glass of ice. And then... Um, I know that here's lavender that I want to say. Oh, good on the lavender, huh? Yes, especially as a pro tennis player, we love our, you know, calming lavender just really takes down the pressure and the heat of the match. The next thing would be the tonic. Now, as gin has grown up, so has tonic. So when you're making a gin and tonic, what you really want is all the carbonation, so I suggest not opening it until you're about to use it. That's a pro tip, I never knew that yeah. one. Yeah, you want to the whole thing in? We'll pour it up until about where you get to the top of the ice. All right. If you want, you can be all fancy. You get your glass. And as you can see, it actually activates the bubbles just a little bit more. I'll give it a try. It's a very good party trick. So, we've got our gin. Lovely sip of the London Dry. You have your ice, you have your tonic, and the last thing is kind of the free for all. It's how you garnish it. Now, traditionally, it would be a citrus, but you can also go fruit, you can also go florid, just with that calming influence. So, have at it. Go ahead and pick your favorite garnish. I like these tongs, too. That is good. All you champ. So, what's going on with the citrus over here? So that is actually dried grapefruit. Now I believe that grapefruit for myself personally is the perfect gin and tonic garnish because it is a little bit bitter but a little bit sweet. Now, the other thing is, oh. you can always, just so you can give it a little stir. This is definitely not the kind of thing that you find in your run-of-the-mill frat house, that's for sure. All right. And we're all set, right? We cheers it up. Yeah, go ahead. I guess we do. Cheers. Cheers. Let's go watch some tennis. <laughs> 